So I'm going to talk to you this morning about SaaS security, about securing Dropbox, Slack, all the software as a service applications that are invading people's networks today. It's very, very clear that even companies that don't think they're adopting cloud are actually adopting cloud through their users. They're getting new applications coming in. Their users are driving the adoption of applications rather than it being controlled through IT. What we found is that in a lot of cases, and we've got monitors on networks, we're finding over 100 software as a service applications being used inside organizations. And in a lot of cases, that can be up to 1,000 or more applications. Now, in a lot of cases, IT departments think they have this under control, but the truth is they actually don't. What we're also finding these days is that some 50% of these applications are becoming mission critical. So we're finding sub-organizations, departments, starting to build complete application suites based on top of these application types. And it's only growing. Time after time after time, it's growing. We hear lots and lots of anecdotes from public sector, from industry, from private organizations, that this is an increasing difficult challenge. So these are the sorts of applications that I'm talking about. Some of these you will recognize on the screen. What we've found is that there are over 15,000 applications now in use that have the ability for you to be able to go to a browser, sign up. Often cases it's free, often cases it requires a credit card. Now, in the early days, it was just one application. You know, Dropbox is a very, very good example of it. But what's happened over the last year to 18 months is that more and more of these applications are becoming application suites. So there's one on here you may have heard of, you may not have heard of, called Slack. Slack is a work group application. It allows you to share information. It allows you to share messaging. But it's actually becoming a platform in its own right. You can sign up for Slack as an individual user, and then you can build a complete application environment on the back of it. The same goes for Zoho, it goes for Trello, it goes for more and more of these applications. So the important thing is that, that SaaS is actually innovating to become a complete software environment in its own right. Now the challenge with these applications is that users are self-selecting the applications. It's no longer the case that the IT department is going through a standard procurement cycle looking for what the best applications are, hosting them in the data center. People with a credit card are now designing their own IT. Now, this has a lot of advantages. It makes organizations more nimble. It makes organize, gives organizations a lot more freedom. The challenge is that most of these companies are marketing direct to the consumers, and then consumers become users, and those users import IT. Classic example of it, somebody in an office somewhere says, I want to share some files. SharePoint's a bit complicated, it's a bit difficult to use, so why don't we use Dropbox? And immediately what's happened is you've now got a group of users using a foreign file sharing platform. No idea where it is, you do with Dropbox, but I could name other ones that you'll probably never have heard of, where your data, your information, potentially patient information, is now being taken outside the organization. So there's a lot of control, but IT and governance still retain accountability. There's risk of security, regulatory inf infringement, and also financial penalties, and also financial costs. Because if you're building an IT infrastructure and your users are building a shadow parallel IT infrastructure, you're paying for the same thing twice. And it's typically thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds that are disappearing out through this particular route. The other problem is um, business continuity or organizational continuity. If one of these applications has become mission critical inside the organization and then goes down, it's very likely your IT people will only hear about it after it's failed and it's actually impacting operations. Now, 
That's bad, but it, ca it is actually worse. If I just look at two governance regulations, GDPR and national infrastructure security, national information security, both of these have specific requirements for the control and management of data. It has to be adequately secured and encrypted in transit. It has to be easy to change customer data on demand. It has to be able to be completely erased. And you need to know who can access the data. Now, I'll give you an example of where it potentially all goes horribly wrong. A lot of people will sign up for things like PDF converters. You can go online, you can put your username and password. By the way, most people put their corporate username and password in there. And then you can drop a PDF in, and that PDF then gets converted. Do you know where it's located? Do you know who has access to it? Do you know if it's secure? If you can't answer those questions, pretty much lost GDPR in one, in one go. You might secure your data centers. You might secure your own information governance. But all it takes is one person to sit there and start posting stuff out to box, and then immediately, you've lost control of that information. So the important thing is, can you take back control of this situation? Well, the answer is you can. You just need to know a few basic things. You need to know which cloud applications are actually in use inside your organization. You need to know what type of applications they are and whether they potentially are a security threat for the organization or not. The challenge with that is that all I need to do is pull up a web browser, type in the address of a website, go to it, sign up, and I'm immediately running. Firewalls don't track it. Desktop tracking tools don't track it. It's a fairly major governance leak. They need to know who in the organization is using this data. Now, the important thing is, it's not just a case of blocking access to it. Remember I said, you're blocking access to 15,000 applications. That's going to be very difficult, and they're growing very, very rapidly. But also, they're using the information. So take the example of Dropbox or Box or any of these. If you've got staff who have stored information inside Dropbox somewhere, and then you block it, you have, in effect, stranded that information. They can't get access to it anymore. And it could be critical information. What needs to happen is you need to manage that data back into your own IT infrastructure. Let's say SharePoint is, or Azure is your standard data sharing mechanism. You need to get them off Dropbox, and you need to get them on to Azure, which is a fairly interesting challenge. You need to know really the governance of the application that's being, in, being used, because it may be that you actually want to use that application and give managed access and managed control to it. And you need to know what sort of stance you're going to take on it overall. So what we do as a company is we provide those capabilities, and we provide them on a very large scale. All we need to do is monitor the traffic on an internet connection, and we can start to give you all the information that's actually required, and also give you the tools to manage that data. We discover all the cloud applications that are in use across the organization. Out of those 15,000, who are using the applications? What are they using the applications for? And how is that base of applications growing and changing? Because it's a very dynamic thing. We can then give you the tools which allow you to communicate with the individuals who are using the applications and give them managed control from the ability to use it with warnings right through to blocking it completely. And then what we do is we provide audit capabilities, which give you the reports and the oversight that allows you to be able to prove to compliance that you have the capabilities in place to manage effectively the use of those SaaS applications. So that's what we do inside Amplify. We're talking to hundreds of organizations, small and large, public sector, private sector. I have not found one organization yet that doesn't have a major issue with this, problem, with this um, 
uh, problem. People, some people are putting their heads in the sand. Some people are recognizing it's a problem and doing nothing about it. A lot of companies these days are saying we need to get this under control because it's a major leakage of compliance, security, and cost in the end by duplicating the use of resources across organizations. So that's the end of my presentation. Any questions? Oh, we're very shy. <laughs> Does anybody want to have a conversation with us? We're on the Novasco stand on uh, stand 222.